Hey, Jay. <laughs> hey, Pat. Well, here we are at your anemone system, and uh, what you have in here is what we call, I believe, sunburst anemones, and you call... We call them flame tips. Flame tips. Yeah. But either way, they're, they're beautiful, and uh, they look stunning, so I thought it would be cool to find out how you keep them in, uh, in such good condition, how you get them to split and, or thrive and split so that you have more and more to sell. So it's our, our BTA tank for bubble tip and enemies. And we have a bunch of smaller ones in here and we have some much larger ones over here. And we were culturing these under uh, some T5s and we were only having a moderate to limited success. So recently we actually we went over to see one of our, our farmer's house and he was farming all the, the bubble tip and enemies at his place under the Radeon G3 Pros. And they were, they're massive. You can see they're huge. They were splitting for him constantly. He was always bringing pieces in uh, to sell to us. And so we changed this tank over to the G3 Pros. And since we did that, uh, all of our bubbles are coming back on ours over here. And they're extending larger. They're getting much bigger. There's so many in here. It's hard to tell if they're already splitting for us or not. But uh, there'll certainly be more to follow on this and uh, more of an update on this in the future. Are most of these from one um, original individual or? Um, yeah, 90% of these are from one individual and we have a couple over here that you can't see from the camera there, but we have a couple over here. There's a that lot of, a lot of babies, else. yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of babies on this side that are a lot smaller, whereas the flame tips are the nice big ones over here. So all the big flame tips over here basically are all from uh, one anemone originally, and then most of these babies over here, the smaller uh, red bubble tip anemones with the green center and the white flecks in them, are from one mother, but from somebody else. And these are all brought to us as uh, trade-in from some of our farmers. Wow! So this is actually this is an example of a uh, of an organism in the trade that's already largely maricultured. Yep. We don't bring any of these in from the wild. We get these all from people that farm them for us. It's typically, uh, somebody that starts propagating corals at home. And then they get tired of having people walking through their living room all the time to buy one frag and hassle them for you know a long time to buy their one frag. So uh, then we connect with them and they start farming exclusively for us and uh, bring them in for trade and then we sell them out to our stores. And uh, actually, you have some of the enemy shrimp in here too. I was going to ask about those. Yeah, we have some of the little white spot and enemy shrimps in here. Um, I don't know if they're beneficial really or not for them to propagate, but we think they look really cool. So we like having them in here and there's some really big ones. Uh, there's a few babies in here. We haven't really seen them breeding in here, but hey, you never know. We've got a couple clownfish in here. They were actually cull clownfish from our clownfish breeder. Uh, so they weren't suitable for sale, but they add a little bio load to our system. And, uh, and then they go play in the anemones and they have lots of space. You actually run quite high flow in this tank. We do. We have two MP10s. The two MP10s are typically turned up at 100%. Uh, we do keep the foam guards on the MP10s to stop the bubble tips from going into uh, the MP10s. Because as you can see up in the front corner there, we have an MP10. It's off for filming, but there's a bubble tip anemone two inches from the pump, and it doesn't get sucked in as long as you have the foam guard on it. And that keeps good high flow in here, and uh, you can see there's no sand on the bottom. Originally, we had a very coarse gravel in here and we were target feeding the anemones and the problem we had was because there wasn't a lot of predators in here we would get bristle worms coming up and then uh, you'd put the food into the anemone and they'd come and attack the anemone and try and take the food away from it so we stripped all the gravel out of it and now we just run bare bottom and it's much easier to scrape the anemones off of the glass too so basically any of the anemones we sell we have some nice big rocks in here but the ones we sell are like that one where when they have split and then they come off the rock and are going up on the glass then those are the ones we pull out. And um, the spectrum you're running on here? AB plus. AB plus. So AB plus. Same, as, same as the other systems. Yep. It looks like fairly high intensity lighting. High intensity, they like a lot of light, they like a lot of flow. And we, and we do rotate for... with, the, with the snails. We have a, a little guard on here to stop the, the BTAs from going down the overflow into the filter sock. And we rotate with different snails in here. So right now we have some Mexican turbos and some really big Trochus in there. Oh wow! That have yeah, look at that guy. Size. All right, he's been in here for a while. 
and that uh, and that just keeps the tank devoid of algae. Yep, nice and clean. Again, this is a very simple system. Berlin method, live rock in the sump, uh, carbon and phosphan in a reactor, and good flow. Uh, continual water changes on not continual, but regular water changes on here, and uh, and everything stays nice and healthy. We do check the parameters on here on a regular basis. Keep the calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium in check. Uh, obviously, the anemones don't need that, but this system is connected to a large LPS system, too. Gotcha. Very cool. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Jay.